What's going on, y'all? It's the Kid J. Nolan here. Hey, man, the hip-hop and music news sector has been kind of dead for the last couple of weeks, so I'm glad I finally have a few things to talk to you guys about that I can actually expound on, turn into teachable lessons, and etc. So now we're about to get into LeBron James and Drake being sued for $10 million over an upcoming hockey documentary that they have coming out. Let's get into the details. We all know NBA megastar, philanthropist, overall good guy, put his homies on. LeBron James, he's partnered with Drake and Future to create an upcoming hockey documentary called Black Ice. Now, Black Ice is about the all-black hockey league in Canada and is based on the 2004 novel Black Ice, the lost history of the colored hockey league of the Maritimes, 1895 to 1925, right? Which was written by George and Daryl Fosty, who are also listed as defendants in this lawsuit. Now, the lawsuit has been issued by Billy Hunter, who's a former executive director of the NBA Players Association, and he's seeking shared profits from the film as well as no less than $10 million in damage. Damages. Let's get into his claim. Mr. Hunter's claiming that the Fosty brothers put together a deal behind his back after he paid them over $265,000 for exclusive intellectual property rights to produce a movie. He's also claiming that he approached the Fosty brothers about this deal. And he's claiming that the Fosty brothers contended that the documentary is a separate entity that wasn't within the parameters of their agreement. So now we're getting into semantics and what is really the true definition behind a movie and a documentary. Are they in fact one and the same? Do they share enough similarities that this could actually hold up in court? Or are the documentary rights and film rights two separate things? Billy Hunter says that he doesn't think that the property rights would be litigated. He says that they expected him to just go away, which he's not. He says that LeBron James and Maverick Carter, although they are very well renowned in music and sports, they are not above stealing people's intellectual property. That's what he's saying in the lawsuit. And of course, all of this is happening right before Black Ice makes its debut, its premiere in the Toronto International Film Festival this Saturday. So I did some looking around on Google just to see what the difference between film rights and documentary rights entail because, hey man, I'm not on anybody's side, but of course I do want to see this documentary. I found something that was very interesting on The Hollywood Reporter from an attorney that was working with an actual filmmaker that wanted to take some events from somebody's life story. They wanted the exclusive rights to their life story and they didn't want anyone else to produce anything else around them. And this is what the attorney had to say. He said, the really bad news for my client is that she cannot prevent another producer from making a film or television show or from writing a book based upon the subject's life. The law is clear and has been for many years that non-commercial speech in a biographical film constitutes non-commercial speech, has First Amendment protection and that releases are not necessary to depict public figures they go further and say the case that made this crystal clear was ginger rogers versus grimaldi from 1988 this was not a case involving a biography but the use of the names of fred astaire and ginger rogers in the title of a film directed by federico fellini the u.s district court for the southern district of new york affirmed on appeal in 1988 held that even though the film was not a biography of fred astaire and ginger rogers the contents of the film were reasonably related to the use of their names the court stated that having determined that the speech in question is artistic expression the speech at issue here is not primarily intended to serve as a commercial purpose the prohibitions of the lanham act do not apply and the film is entitled to the full scope of protection under the first amendment this rule applies even to films that use a public figure's name or likeness for non-biographical material so long as the use is reasonably related to the content and it is especially true for material that is biographical there have been over the years several attempts to prevent biographical films and live stage productions by the subjects of the productions these attempts have been unsuccessful for those of y'all that have been tuned into the film world as of late you already know that this sounds a lot like what's going on with Mike Tyson, right? They got his life story show on Hulu right now, and he didn't authorize his story to be told. He has no connection to this Mike Tyson story that they released on Hulu. He's on social media denouncing it, and he's saying, hey, man, y'all are disregarding me as a black man. Y'all don't want my input about my own life. Y'all got this person that don't look nothing like me, can't box, can't do nothing. Y'all just ran with my story and ran off on the plug. 
He's mad. And I think that he's justified in his anger because he's alive to see it. However, according to the reports of this court document that I'm talking about, it sounds like anybody could basically make your life story. You just have to go out and make your own. It's kind of crazy, but under the First Amendment, it seems that that's what it is. There are some stipulations that you can't use depicting certain non-public figures, such as family members without further releases, getting their permission, or to use certain events that may only appear in one source, such as a book biography that are not found in news articles or other places in the public, right? So in my estimation, man, it's feeling a lot like Mr. Billy Hunter got finessed, right? He spent $265,000 for the book rights and the intellectual property rights of this story however the original writers are saying eh we gave you the film rights the movie rights this however is a documentary that's going to be shown in film festivals probably released on a streaming platform at a later time documentaries are in a much different category than your traditional film so yes you paid us two hundred and sixty five thousand. we appreciate it we hope your movie comes out soon but first order of business is this new documentary Thank you. See you later. That's basically what the Fosty brothers are saying. Now, of course, this is a open case. Anything can happen. Um, LeBron James, Future, Drake, they may have to come off about $10 million and give him uh, some sort of royalties in this film. It is yet to be seen. I am not a legal professional. I can't give any legal advice or counsel on the subject. I'm just giving you guys some examples of things that have happened in the past that will pretty much stand in LeBron James and company's favor. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, though, man. And as I always say, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, man. I got plenty more content like this. It dates back at least a year. I do this all the time, man, throughout the week. So there's plenty of content for you to catch up to. And by the time you catch up, we're going to have more on the way. All right. Much love and respect. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.